<laughs> you see, if you don't pay attention to certain patterns, you'll miss it. That's why I'm telling you, we, we are obsessed with the results, but not the formula. I want this so bad, but I don't understand the formula. Let me give you an example. John chapter 6, from verse 8. John 6, 8. Do you want NIV or? Whichever version you want. Okay, amen. <laughs> uh, John 6, 8. Mm -hmm. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon mm -hmm. Peter's brother, spoke up. Mm -hmm. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But mm. how far will they go among so many? Mm. Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. Mm. About 5,000 men were there. Mm. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said Stop to Stop right there. Okay. Thanksgiving multiplies what you have. Jesus didn't pray, Father, now your children are sitting down. <laughs> Father, you know we need bread. <laughs> Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, <laughs> bread multiply. He took the bread, gave thanks, broke it into pieces. When people started taking it, it never ran out. Wow. You don't multiply things by praying. Look at Jesus' prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. There was no Father, open the doors of provision. That's not a prayer point. Mm. Prayer of thanksgiving. Our Father who art in heaven, your name is great. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our bread. The moment you thank God, provision is automatic. Amen. Multiplication is automatic. But you think God is hungry to be praised. No, God doesn't care if you praise him or not. Because he's God anyway. He doesn't need, you see, the devil needs praise because it's flattery to him. When we praise God as his children, we invoke his nature. It is not for God, it's for our benefit. So the prayer of thanksgiving, giving thanks, Brings multiplication. That's one, what Anna did. He said, you give me, I'll give you back. This will be my gratitude to you. You give me your child, I'll give him back to you. This will be my way of giving you thanks. That you blessed me with something, now it's yours, I don't even want it. How many children did she have? The Bible says her womb was opened. Samuel wasn't the only one that came out of there. Are you sure you all are here? We're here, Papa. Anyone who cannot thank God for what they have, it will never increase. Mm. You are thanking God for what will come. That's a mistake. Ooh. You're out of touch. Mm. God. God always begins by multiplying what is in your hand. When Moses was with him, what did he ask him? What is in your hand? The woman with the flower in the house, God asked her, make sure what is in your house will not stop. Mm. You cannot recognize God for what he has given you. How can you remember? God doesn't give you something new. He increases what you have. God will not give you a new anointing. You just grow in it because what God gives you is sufficient. Paul said, Father, deliver me. He said, my grace is sufficient. Mm. I already gave you what is enough. Yeah. Whatever is in the hands of Jesus multiplies. Yeah. This is why it is a requirement for you to learn to be content with what you have been given. That's why the Bible says, do not despise the days of what? Humble beginnings. Mm. Everything you see in Revelation Church was already there inside of me. Even the more that will come, will still come from what already is in me. It's not something new that will fall from heaven. Nope. Father, I want to live long. 
Father, make me live long. Oh, Father, I thank you for this day. Then God will give you many days. Oh, Father, thank you for this glass of water. There's somebody somewhere that cannot have this water. Me, you've given me. Father, I pray. You can't recognize God for things. That's why they can't multiply. Mm. They said, Jesus, we need to send them somewhere else so that they can get food for themselves. You see, every time you have to leave what God gave you, you have to do it yourself. Send them away. Let them go and find food for themselves. Jesus said, why are we sending them? Let's give them something to eat. But we don't have anything. You see, every time you have to leave what God has given you, you have to go and do it yourself. Ah. Uh. You see, everything in your life is a progression. Mm -hmm. The Bible does not say you will have eternal life. It says you have eternal life. What will take you to heaven is not something that is coming. It's already in you. Amen. And in this life, the more you recognize it, you give thanks for it. That is the Zoe life. The overflowing eternal life starts to touch your physical life. You see, we have eternal life and we have everlasting life eternal life and everlasting life are different eternal life is that life you need for you to exist in eternity everlasting life is a life that is in a loop replay it just keeps going everlasting it means it comes to an end then it starts again it comes to an end then it starts again it's everlasting so for you to m measure its everlastingness, it means that it comes to the end and then it continues. Eternal has no beginning and no end. So if you carry everlasting life, it means that if I take something and I give thanks, it enters the realm of everlasting. It doesn't run out. But the only way you put something in that realm, if you don't have the prayer of thanksgiving, you cannot. When Job lost everything, did he pray for multiplication? No. What did he do? The first prayer he did is he gave thanks. He said, from my mother's womb I came naked, naked will I go back. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken. Praise be to his name. Then he bowed down and worshipped. The first thing he did is he praised God for what happened. And God gave him more wealth, more kids. Notice, he didn't give him just... No, notice the language that the Bible says. God gave him more children. That's what the Bible says. It didn't say God gave him new children. It says God gave him more children. Because his children were not done away with. They're in heaven. It's a continuation. God multiplied his flock. He did not say God gave him new flock. He multiplied it. It means that the, what you lost is not really lost. It has been moved to a realm that is waiting for thanksgiving for it to enter in that place and then uh, I feel like I think let's say thanks. You know that that's just one form of prayer. I think that's enough to end the night. But the prayer of thanksgiving is not just with words. It's with material things. But you don't understand these things. Did God tell uh, uh, Moses? <laughs> they said, Moses, we want bread. God made bread rain every day. There was no prayer. God wanted them to thank him. I gave your father's bread in the wilderness. So my, my, my question is, is very simple. The first thing Jesus taught us how to do is to glorify his name, give thanks unto his name, bless it. our father who is in heaven. Alobi, your name is great. Jesus just took bread and said, Father, we bless you who gives us bread. Put it down, boom broke it into pieces, feed them. But before he even did that, he told them, tell them to sit and in certain groups. Gave thanks, broke the bread himself, said, give it to them. They are taking the bread, they are realizing that 
Wait, what? Why isn't the bread running out? Why isn't the fish? Jesus did not bring it down and then there was more fish. He broke it into pieces. But every time they dipped their hand, they thought that the piece was running out. They realized that it's not running out. You hate your job so much. You are so obsessed with the next chapter of your life that you're forgetting to thank God for what you have right now. You're forgetting there's somebody sleeping outside right now. You can't just praise God. When you praise God, this is your prayer. Father, I thank you for all the big things and the small things. When did God ever do anything small? Every seed looks small until you put it in the ground. You water it, it turns into a tree. Then you're shocked. Ah, is it that little thing that I thought was little? Your house, the Bible says, God enthrones the praises of his people. You have to understand that the nature of God is that wherever he is, creation becomes more vibrant. Creation is increased. That is the very nature of God. Wherever God is, things begin to produce after his kind. It says God enthrones the praises of his people. When people are praising him, God comes and is enthroned in that. And when he's enthroned, his nature is second nature for all those things to just start happening. Everything that God does, he says, let it produce after its kind. But you don't pray, Father, let things be produced after its kind. Just the fact that you're in his presence, you give something, it starts doing the same thing. Jesus goes on the boat, says, Peter, we're going to go and catch fish. But Lord, it's the wrong time. Do you realize Jesus never stopped the flow of fish? It's Peter that did. And his friends. When one fish came, so many, some fish were just diving in the net. They filled their boat with fish. Another boat came. They filled it with fish. Their nets started breaking and their boat started sinking. They said, enough. The presence of Jesus causes what you have to increase. Peter was in the same lake. He couldn't do anything. Your situation can turn into a multiplication, a, a multiplication equation. What you think is dry is dry because Jesus has not been praised. <laughs> when did you thank God for your children? When did you thank God for all the trials and tribulations? When did you thank God for all the rejection? When did you thank God for all the pain? When did you thank God for all the things that have brought you back to him? When did you thank God for these things? Because it says all things work for your good. That is giving you a reason to praise him. But you want out of this thing so bad that you're missing the point. Divine health is not a prayer point. It's when you start thanking God for your health. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you for my health. I thank you for my health. I can breathe again this morning. Oh, Lord, you are good. Thanksgiving is powerful. Enter his presence with thanksgiving. His presence is not just a matter of entering. The, what is the point of entering his presence? People don't understand that line. You cannot enter the presence of a God that is everywhere. You're already in his presence. So what does it mean? Enter into his nature. Enter into his person. Jesus said, unless you are in me and I in you, you can bear no what? Fruits. Multiplication comes by joining, but the only way you join is praise. So you want more money, but you don't know how to get more money from God. Mm. You think it's about asking, no. If he has already given you a dollar, it means you don't need to pray for money. My God. <laughs> the seed of money is already, a seed is never big. Wow. You're confusing a seed for a harvest. <laughs> A seed produces a harvest. God gives seed to the sower. 
everything begins with what? A seed. seed. Mm. It does not begin with a harvest. This is why Warren Buffett has never prayed, yet he has money. <laughs> the seed of money is already in your hands. Amen. You don't know how to thank God. Mm-hmm. Unless I am a millionaire, then I can thank God for money. But what I have is not enough to thank God. When you pray about money, you are praying for your bills to be paid, for this to be paid, for this. Not Father, I thank you for this $10 I have. Thank you, Father. I don't take it for granted. You are so good to me, Lord. Others can't have this. Yes, I know I want more, but this is the seed of great things, and I thank you for it. I thank you that you have not given me this to leave me here. I will be faithful with this one you have given me. Let it have a purpose in your kingdom. Whether it's to feed a homeless person, whether it's for me to save it, but whether it's to take care of myself, let it have a purpose in your kingdom. I praise you for this. You never do that. Instead, you'll be fasting for financial security. (laughs) Solomon never fasted for that. If you want direction in life from God, you don't pray, God, give me direction. Let me ask you a simple question, right? If you want to get to a certain place, right? Let's say I want to travel from here to New York. How do I get to New York? You use maps, right? Why do you use maps? It gives you direction? Okay. What is giving you direction? But what is in the map? The voice. No, information. Okay. It's information. So, what is the application of knowledge? Do you want to be rich? Okay, do you want to be rich? Yes. Don't act like you don't want to. I'm scared to answer, no? So, you already know where you want to go. So, what are you lacking? Wisdom and knowledge. So, if you want God to give you direction... You don't pray for direction. You pray for wisdom. Mm. Solomon wanted to lead the people of God. He said, Father, he told him, what do you want? He said, Lord, give me wisdom. God said, because you have asked me for this, I'll give you everything else that you want. Now, I want you to understand why asking for wisdom is important. You see, only a fool says there is no God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. When you pray for wisdom, it says the fear. What does fear mean? Anyone know what fear means? The reverence of God is the beginning of wisdom. Meaning that if I have reverence for God, it means I acknowledge God. Acknowledge the Lord and he shall make what? Your path what? Straight. So you're praying for a straight path without acknowledging him. It will never happen. Acknowledge the Lord with everything and he will make your path straight. So you're going through turns and twists. is because you never acknowledged him. Father, give me direction. Father, give me. No, 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 no. It begins with wisdom. The sons of Sceva had what? Wisdom of the times. They have the understanding. They could get it. They didn't have prayer. They had wisdom to understand the times. You don't even know your time of blessing because you have no wisdom. You cannot tell the things are shifting. Unless you feel it. 
or you hear the voice of God, then you don't even know that it's your time. Yet you should have enough wisdom to tell, okay, winter is about to come. I need a coat. Mm. Then I will be safe. This is about to change, so it means I should be planting. You lack direction because you have no wisdom. So our prayers are focused on the wrong things because you pray amiss. You want multiplication. Don't pray for multiplication. Give thanks.